Well, once a subject becomes public, there are always several sides to the truth and to reality. We tried for two reasons to be silent. One was the high degree of respect for the central bank. I have in my public service time appointed three central bank governors with cabinet approvals. So I am familiar with the importance of the role of the central bank on the subject of monetary policies and the orderly conduct of financial services industry. Because of that, we resisted any temptation to respond to the suddenness of the emergence of actions on the part of the central bank, which would be took us by surprise. But regardless of that, my love for the island, my commitment to the well-being and the economic growth of the island, which was the reason why we were there, we have been there for over 30 years, prompted me to tell my colleagues to relax and to let the central bank do what it thought was absolutely necessary. But there was a point in time when we were feeling that we should give our side of the story also in order for the general public to have a clear picture as to what the truth is, where the companies are, and what needs to be done in the best interest of the island, island's economy, its and its interest in growing its GDP with our help and with help on the part of all the others who are active on this economy's future growth. What sparked your interest in Curacao so many years ago? Again, you're a billionaire. You did not necessarily have to start businesses somewhere else. Why Curacao? Well, the one thing that I think uh, is not difficult to accept is that when you are active in a country like the United States of America, you have to have a special reason for leaving the shores of America, which is the greatest nation on earth, the greatest economy, and the greatest opportunity to go to a small island with a limited population of 140,000, with a rate of economic growth that is, has been plus or minus 1% over, over the past 30 years. And if you do not have a special reason, you don't go there for money-making opportunities. At 1% rate of plus or minus economic growth, the opportunity for making money is obviously in no way comparable with the tremendous opportunities in America. So the credit for attracting our interest goes to former Prime Minister Don Martino. It was at his invitation that my team visited for the first time, visit the island in Curacao in 1986, which is just about 32 years ago. Uh, it was with the intention of doing something that was of interest to the growth and, and, uh, and success of the economy of the island. Because I noticed that the island had very high level of education on the part of the business community, on the part of the general public as a whole. And it had gone through some years of agreement in a tax treaty with the United States, as a result of which almost every major country in the world had gained a toehold in Curacao until that agreement was terminated. Just about the time the agreement was terminated, we got the invitation from the uh, Prime Minister Don Martino. And he invited you as a guest, of course, but for what reason? Because well, at that time you were in what function? Did he invite you as an investor? At, as, as what exactly? Well, I had, he was familiar with my background in public service in my country of birth, where I had led a group of technocrats in the growth of our economy that had reached 
10.2-10.1% a year in GDP growth in real terms, which means after inflation. We created full employment and we, we had the created a diversification of our economy, which could serve as a very special example for an island like Curacao. He was kind enough to invite me to go there and share my experiences with the business leaders, with the government leaders, with labor leaders, and with anyone who was interested. So we went there and had a very interesting visit to Curacao in 1986. And what was and the, the intention the, for the after intention, that? Yes. The intention, as I understood it, was on their part to see if the, exp the vast experiences that I and the rest of my co uh, 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 cooperative uh, team had gained in the growth of our, uh, of our economy in my homeland and had set a great example for encouraging foreign investment led by the United States of America. Every major company in America that you might think of had some kind of a participation in the growth of, the, of Iran's economy at the time. Uh, see whether a new chapter that could be started after the termination of the tax treaty with the United States could then serve for the, for, uh, the Curacao's economy as a starting point in a new chapter that would then take advantage of the experiences that Curacao had had with the global community in that tax treaty and start a new chapter of diversification of your economy. And that is how it all got started. But did something happen particularly at that point? Did it bear fruit or in 1986 nothing particularly came uh, out of that? No, it meeting. did not. It served Why? as a starting point. Okay. Uh, in fact, I was surprised that the cabinet very kindly passed a decree appointing me as the goodwill ambassador of the Dutch Antillean region. I took it seriously, and from then on, our interest in Curacao continued. However, I must say that it took us from 1986 to the year 2000, which is 14 years of a study, constant contact, dialogue back and forth without making a definitive decision either to invest or to come up with a game plan that we could then interject into your economy. It was in the year 2000, which was 14 years later, 14 years after that visit, that we then made a decision to do something specific. From the year 2000, it took us six more years before we identified companies for acquisition purposes, meaning in the financial services group, Banco de Caribe, in the insurance group, and, yeah, uh, and its different insurance companies, and generally investment banking services and so on, in order to see whether we could come up with projects that could be supported by these financial services companies if we acquired them and be helpful to the, for the development of and reconstruction of Mullet Bay, which was a major uh, tourist attraction in St. Martin, having been owned by us since 1982 and then having been destroyed by hurricanes subsequently, having been rebuilt and destroyed again. And the, the, the combination of the financial services, the bank, the insurance, the insur investment banking, and Mallet Bay presented an opportunity for us to interject Mallet Bay into the financial services ownership, but at the same time, planned for the redevelopment of Mallet Bay that was in the best interest of St. Martin, which we equally loved. Our children had grown up there for years from 1982. And as a combination, the cooperation between Curacao, St. Martin, Aruba, and the rest of the Antillian Islands was an opportunity for us because we believed that America went all the way to the Middle East to interject the principles of our democratic beliefs.